and uh, let me introduce the uh, last speaker in today's session. It is Sławomir Solecki from uh, University of, from United States, from one of its universities, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And well, Sławomir Solecki comes originally from University of Wrocław, the same as mine. And at this University of Wrocław in Poland, he got his Master of Science in 89, and uh, his advisor was Janusz Haratonik. But then he moved to Caltech, and then in California Institute of Technology, he got his PhD in 1995 under Alexander Kechlis. He got several awards, starting with the third place in <laughs> Martin Kiewicz competition for the best master's thesis in mathematics in Poland in 1989. Then he got Kari Prize in mathematics for an outstanding doctoral dissertation in applied and pure mathematics at Caltech in 95 and in the same year, Sachs Prize for the same dissertation. The final, not not finally, but next, he, proved, uh, he got scientific sci scientific prize of the Mathematical Institute of of Institut Mathematyczny of Polish Academy of Sciences in 2010. And well, he will speak today on a general approach to finite Ramsey theory. Sławomir Solecki. Thank you. Do we turn it on? Is it turned on? Yes, yes. You can have to turn it on, maybe. But it is here, this time. And then we have to wait. Yes. <laughs> well, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for the wonderful conference and Ludomir for the introduction. Uh, so what I want to talk about, uh, speak about today, So this is a, a general approach to, to finite Ramsey theory. That, that's, that's the general theme of the talk. And so, but before I actually, I, I would like, I will prove nothing in the talk, but I, will, I would like to at least get to the point where I can precisely state the theorem. Uh, so, but before I do that, before I introduce all the, the relevant notions, I would like to give a very quick survey of uh, why logicians and especially descriptive set theorists are interested in Ramsey theory? Where, where did, did it come from? It came from really a wonderful connection between that was discovered uh, maybe eight or nine years ago, uh, the connection between topological dynamics and Ramsey theory. So let me start with this. Let, so I will introduce here the, really the main notion for that connection. So a topological group, so it's a completely general topological group, but the groups that we are really looking at um, are what goes under the name of Polish groups. So these are groups that are separable, have separable and complete metric. So we have a, a, such a topological group is called extremely amenable if uh, it's continuous action, if I have a continuous action of the group on a compact space, Hauser space, such a thing is called a flow, uh, I will get a fixed point. So it's a very strong notion, it seems. So a group is, uh, the name comes from the fact that if I have an amenable group acting continuously on a compact space, I will get an invariant measure. But here I get an in, not only an invariant measure, but it's an invariant measure concentrated on a point. So this looks like a very strong notion, but at least uh, due to because of her, work of Herrer and Christensen, such group exists. Now we show that they do not show up among classically studied groups, so groups that carry hard measure. So th th there are no such groups that are locally compact. But later on, Gromov and Milman. Uh, show that the interesting groups are among groups that are extremely amenable. So, uh, for example, the unitary group with the, the right topology on it, the, the strong uh, operator topology, uh, the unitary groups of, of an infinite dimensional complex Hilbert space is extremely amenable. And this proof use a <coughs> concentration of measures. So use a certain property that has to do with, so, <coughs> The condition that we, the, the group needs to have, first of all, an increasing sequence of compact subgroups, increasing sequence of compact subgroups, you know, the group is, is very large, 
and the sequence is such that its union is dense, plus it exhibits certain uh, this concentration of measure. I don't want to define it, but it's a certain probabilistic notion. Uh, and once we have this concentration of measure uh, on, on groups in the way that I stated it, uh, we get uh, extreme amenability, and that this is what was proved by Gromov and Milman. And later on, very close connections uh, between extreme amenability and fine and Ramsey theory were discovered. So there was always, in, in, in proving extreme amenability, there is essentially two methods are available, the probabilistic method and this combinatorial method. So let me illustrate, so I would like to go over some sort of a rough division of Ramsey theory. Uh, it's not very, I mean, it's not original. I mean, this is, this is something that uh, people know about, this, this, this sort of a division. And I would like to illustrate uh, Ramsey theorems coming from various groups. Uh, I would like to illustrate their impact on dynamics. So let me start first with this unstructured, essentially this is into, into unstructured and structural Ramsey theory. So the unstructured Ramsey theory enters is into these sort of considerations, and th this was the f this big discovery of Pestov, uh, who looked at the group of, uh, look at Q, look at simply the rational numbers, forget all the structure on Q, just remember the uh, inequality, and we look at all the bijections from Q to Q that preserve um, that preserve the, the order. So this is naturally group with composition, and we topologize it by pointwise convergence. So we forget that Q has any metric on it, just pointwise convergence. And uh, with, uh, this is a topological group, it actually it, it is a Polish group, and Pestov showed that it is extremely amenable. And this follows, I mean, once you view this, uh, the group properly, it follows directly from the classical Ramsey theorem. There is, it was clear that there is, it's, it's a very tight connection with, with it's sort of like, it's almost equivalent to, to the classical Ramsey theorem. And then came the work of Glasner and Weiss, who, Weiss, who looked at, uh, look at the counter set, uh, so totally disconnected, <coughs> compact, uh, perfect space, and they looked at the group of all homeomorphisms of the counter set. So it's sort of all the automorphism of that space. This was all the automorphism of that space. Here they look at all the automorphism of this space, and they put the natural topology on it, namely the topology of um, um, uniform convergence. This group is not extremely amenable, but what they were able to do is they were able to classify, to, to determine what goes under the name, the name of universal minimal flow. So each, each group, I said that flows are simply actions of group, continuous action of group on compact spaces. Minimal among those are the, uh, are the flows that in which all orbits are dense. And the universal one is simply a surjectively universal object. So any, any, uh, uh, any minimal flow is a surjective homomorphism, uh, is a surjective homomorphic image of, of, of that one. Each group has a unique universal flow like this. It's, it's very difficult to compute in many cases. In many cases, it's a huge space. But in the case of this group, group of homeomorphisms to 2 n, it turned out to be actually quite manageable. And they were able to determine the, the crucial role in this proof was played by the <coughs> dual Ramsey theorem. So this is a Ramsey theorem that concerns partitions of uh, finite sets ra rather than um, subsets of finite sets. So it's, it's a dual. I'll come back to this notion of duality if I, if I have time towards the end of the talk. Uh, Let's talk now about the structure around the theorem. This is where, this is the second sort of branch uh, of finite Ramsey theory. And here, here is the, this was actually the, the, in the in work, in the work building on this Pestov and Glasner uh, breakthroughs. Um, there was a work of Kekris, Pestov, and Todorcevich where this tight connection was found between extreme amenability and extreme amenability and uh, Ramsey and Ramsey theory. Of course, such a connection, we cannot hope for a connection of this sort for general groups. The group, we have to restrict our attention to very particular groups here, but it's still a wide class. So let me first very quickly introduce this class of groups for which the, 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 uh, for which the connection works. So look at natural numbers and look at some group of bijections of natural numbers, some group of permutations. <coughs> Assume this is a closed group. 
So assume, a, put the point-wise topology on the group and assume it's closed with the topo uh, as, as a subset, so as a subset of all permutations of natural numbers, there's a closed subgroup. So for example, a good, um, uh, good model for it is uh, the group considered by Pestov. When, I, uh, when you take uh, the rational numbers with inequality, and all uh, bijections preserving the inequality. Easy to check, it's a closed subgroup of all permutations. Turns out, it's not difficult to see, that each such group, even though this is quite a general definition, each such group is represented as an automorphism group of a structure. The structure is countable. So, st and st I, don't, I, want, I don't want to be precise here. This is a model theoretic structure that can be actually assumed relational. So uh, maybe maybe a graph, maybe it's a partial order with a linear order, maybe it's a metric space. This 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 sort of uh, structure we have in mind here, and uh, the structure can be assumed to be have high degree of homogeneity in the sense that if I have finite subsets of A and I know that they are isomorphic as finite uh, as substructures of A, this each such, uh, isomorphism extends to an automorphism of the whole group. So it's a high degree of homogeneity. Think of Q, if I have two, say, four, four element subsets of Q, <coughs> right, and I map one to the other in an increasing manner, then it extends quite easily by, by a back and forth argument going back to Cantor to an automorphism of the whole group Q. So all groups G, that are closed groups of permutations, can be assumed to be of that form. And then Kekris, Pesto, and Todorcevic showed that G is extremely amenable this happens if and only if it can be represented like this, well, with some additional conditions. And these are the important <coughs> conditions. Of course, this is not sufficient for it to be extremely amenable since every group is of that form. So first of all, A has to be linearly ordered. So there is some linear order on that group, on, on, on A. A has to be linearly ordered. There is some linear order on it. For example, Q actually carries only the linear order. And if you look at the class of all finite substructures of A, this is a Ram, what's called a Ramsey class. So this means, so let me maybe say it here precisely, because this will come up later on, if I have a, a small substructure of A and a finite, and a medium substructure of A, and some number of colors, there is a large substructure of A, such that if I color with the, with the colors that I'm given, all copies of the finite substructure in the large substructure, there is a medium-sized substructure, such that all finite substructures get the same color, su substructure of the medium structure, right? Small, medium, large, and I color small in large, and I find a copy of medium in large, such that all uh, small ones inside of the medium get the same color. So uh, this was a nice connection also because of the uh, earlier work by Nerger and other people, and later work also by these people and other people, that. It, they actually knew and uh, knew many Ramsey classes of, of, of uh, Ramsey classes, and this allowed people to trans. This, this is sort of a bridge between Ramsey theory and and uh, dynamics. It allowed people to transfer uh, theorems from one set to the other, produce many interesting examples of such groups. And of course, we shouldn't fool ourselves that, it, I mean, it, the picture is that nice. There are always exotic number theory, uh, uh, exotic Ramsey theorems. And here, I mean, some of these exotic Ramsey theorems are actually important for dynamics. So this is a, a few years ago with Ilias Farah. We, we, I don't want to go into details, but we proved an, an exotic Ramsey theorem whose proof is related to Lovatz's calculation of chromatic numbers of uh, the Knesser, uh, Knesser graphs. So this, it's a theorem that sort of doesn't fall into this uh, in either part of the division. And it was important because it implies extreme amenability of certain groups that I won't define either. But uh, the, the, the point was that it, it had to do with this uh, tension between uh, concentration of measure and Ramsey theory. These groups did not have concentration of measure, in, despite having many sequences of compact subgroups that could qualify for concentration of measure. So this is an extremely amenable group, has nice sequences like this, but you don't get concentration of measure. And this is because of some strange Ramsey theorem. So, so there are some exotic Ramsey theorems that maybe whose place in the whole theory still, still is sort of mysterious. So let me talk about this abstract approach. So uh, people started, I mean, became interested in, in Ramsey theory, and one of the line of thoughts was that one should really get 
somehow try to identify the unifying principle, ed principles and maybe, maybe I'll get to it later. So unifying principles, at least uh, uh, behind the core of Ramsey theory. So the core here would be this unstructured part. Because the structured part is built by certain al very interesting amalgamation arguments over the, the unstructured part of the theory. So it is, was really a sort of a search for unifying principles. And this undertaking sort of in the spirit of this, things like this were done for infinite Ramsey theory that has more set theoretic flavor. And they were done by, there by Carlson and Todorcevich. So an uh, earlier work by Carlson and Todorcevich had a recent book in 2010 where uh, he considered infinite Ramsey theory. But what I will talk about is more in the spirit of a very recent threatening of, of, of Gromov, where he sort of, it's a, a third of this paper is about Ramsey theory, and uh, so it's, it's, it's in a sense sort of a call for identifying the right algebraic structures, the right unifying principles for the, for the Ramsey theorem. Ramsey theory, at least is unstructured part, and for finding connections with other areas of mathematics. So this is maybe uh, more connected to uh, with what I will be uh, I'll be talking about. Uh, but uh, before maybe maybe I should say that this is really it's a broader project. I will talk about a third of it, a th one third of the of the whole landscape. There is this finite Ramsey theory. There is infinite Ramsey theory, and there are certain methods uh, also uh, connecting with infinite Ramsey theory coming from use use of ultra filter spaces. I will talk about the finite Ramsey theory, but part of the outcome is, and this is a recent work, that it turns out that the infinite Ramsey theory can be viewed as a, as a limiting case of the finite Ramsey theory. It turns out that I will define this algebraic structure for finite Ramsey theory. Infinite Ramsey structures are, in a sense, inverse limit of these uh, structures for finite Ramsey theory. And then the, the ultra filter method needs a, a, a separate treatment but also one gets a single type of algebraic structures there and a single theorem, which is quite surprising, that uh, produces all this variety of, 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 of Ramsey statements for, uh, that, that, that use ultra-filter methods. So this is somehow, this, the field has a very nice feel to it. That the, 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 the longer you look at it and the, sort of the deeper you go, things don't sort of spread around. They, they get more, more condensed and, and, and they, they point to, you know, single type of algebraic structure, si single type of theorem. So this is, uh, let me make, uh, aha. So uh, what I want to do is to, to, to outline this approach that recovers uh, most of the unstructured Ramsey theory. Also makes it, it makes it possible to prove new, new results. Some of them are of a very classical flavor that could, be, could have been proved maybe 30 years ago. And uh, the point is to reveal the formal algebraic structure underlying this, this the finite pure Ramsey theorem, so unstructured ones. And the whole thing has the following structure. So we will define <coughs> appropriate algebraic objects, then we'll formulate a Ramsey statement for them and the pigeonhole statement. And the theorem says that the pigeonhole statement implies the Ramsey statement. This, this is the main, main, main theorem. And this, the, part of the power of it comes from the fact that it can be used iteratively. So you can uh, get a pigeonhole, prove Ramsey, statement, and then you can use the Ramsey statement as a pigeonhole principle and, and keep going, producing more and more uh, power to result. <coughs> okay. So let me just flash here the, the list of, of Ramsey statements, the partial list of Ram Ramsey statements that can, are sort of iterative instances of these general results. So there is this classical Ramsey theorem, with which I will illustrate. There is the dual Ramsey theorem. There are some new results here. And in particular, I would like to emphasize this one. So this is a dual Ramsey theorem for trees. The, in, in, in Ramsey theory, this unstructured part, there were two sort of, one of the two main lines of thoughts was, a uh, line of generalizations of the classical Ramsey statement was to the dual one and to the uh, to Ramsey statements for trees. And this is some, this kind of brings these two lines, of, uh, two lines together into one, one statement. One has to be able, quite careful how one defines the objects here. Uh, but uh, maybe I'll get to it. It has to do something with Galois correspondences and uh, embedding projection pairs. So, let me get to the, the more concrete part. So, 
I would like to state this very precisely. So at least one theorem is stated in full. So what are these algebraic notions? So uh -huh. uh, before that, I, I would like to illustrate these notions by a theorem that doesn't really need any help to be proved. This is the classical Ramsey theorem, but it's because it's, it's so natural and, and it's sort of easy to state, it's, it's, it's good for illustrating the, 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 the general notions. So the Ramsey theorem, uh, what we have is we have two numbers, k and l, and then we have what we are, some number of colors, maybe two. So k is small, l is medium, and we are looking for a large number n. And then we take an m element set and we color all k element subsets of the m element set. So we color all small subsets of the large set. And then we find a, a medium-sized subset, subset of size L, in the set of size M, such that all small subsets of the medium set get the same color. Now, it's, it's good to reformulate, for the purposes of this general, uh, general approach, it's good to reformulate it, and this was done by, uh, by people a long time ago. One can view it, inst one can, instead of looking at sets, we actually put some structure on it. We put the structure of linear orders. So we consider finite linear orders. And then what happens is, uh, instead of talking about subsets, we can talk about morphisms. So if I have two linear sets, two linearly ordered sets, and I embed this one into that one, so the small one into a bigger one, then the embedding, of course, completely determines its range. But it's also the case that the range completely determines embedding because I just enumerate the range by the, the, the appropriate, by the, the, by the linear order. So instead of talking about images, I will talk about uh, embeddings. And this will make, I mean, it's a, it's a completely trivial thing, but it just made, made notation, makes notation easier. So I will look at, so this for me uh, is a computational notation. If Q is a natural number, this is the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, up to Q. So p element subset of this, of this set is just all increasing injections from here to here, identified with the, with the image. So the image is identified with the morphism. So this linear order, by the way, this is why in Pestov's theorem, we have a set with a linear order. We have q. This, this comes from the linear orders that are uh, on, on these finite sets. So here is a statement of the classical Ramsey theorem. Fix a natural, a natural number d. This is number of colors, unimportant here. Important here is k and l, k small, l medium. And then look at the set of all increasing injections from k to l. So small, essentially small subsets, k element subset of an l element set. And now the statement of Ramsey theorem says that there is an m, large number m, such that if I look at the set of all increasing injections from L to M, so all medium-sized sets of the, of, of the large set, right? So increasing injections from L to so K to L, and there is some M much bigger. <coughs> then what happens, we, we decolor, color with decolors, this composition. So I take an X in P, so it goes from K to L, and I take F from F, it goes from L to M. So this composition here is an injection, increasing injection from K to N. So, I, so these are as if I were coloring certain subsets, K element subsets of this large set of size N. Right? This is the, this, 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 uh, <coughs> these compositions go from K to M. So I color uh, M element subset of a large set M. Well, it's not really some, it's actually all of them. One easily checks that every increasing injection from K to M factors to L. So actually I color, if I color this composition, I color all increasing injections from K to M. Then there exists an F0 in F here, such that uh, this F0 composed with every X from P, this, this, this gets the single color. Why? This F0 is just an L, L it's an embedding of L to M. So this is a, a medium-sized subset of the large set. And these are just small subset of that medium set that got determined by F0. So this is just a reformulation. Nothing happens here. This is important to see because there's no cheating going on. Now actually, this is just standard Ramsey theorem. Just reformulate. OK. So what are the norm composition spaces? Uh, so I have here, uh, OK. So this is a general notion. This is, I would call them norm composition spaces. It's a set, and there are three objects defined on that set. 
So what are these? So I will have a partial function from A cross A to A. This is always, a in all applications, it's a partial function. It's never total, but I will still call it multiplication. And then there is a single function from A to A. This is, I will call it truncation. And there is a function from A into a linearly ordered set, I will call it a norm. This happens, this sort of structures, I will, I will have to tell you what the axioms are as it is, it's nothing. But uh, they show up in all these Ramsey theorems, this type of, this type of structures. So uh, what's supposed to happen, this is supposed to be like uh, composition, like composition in, this, in the particular example. It's defined only partly, we'll see it uh, later on, also in the example here. This is a function that feeds the induction. So I have an object in A, I truncate it, I should get a simpler object. So truncation is sort of getting to a simpler object, and norm is supposed to measure how complicated the element of A is. And it just has values in some linear space. Linear, linearly ordered set. So what are the axioms for these three objects? So I will assume the background assumption is that multiplication is uh, associative. So to define associativity, of course, I need that this is an equation between two expression, expressions. So I assume that both, assuming that both these expressions are defined, there is equality. That's what it means to be associative for a partially, partial multiplication. I will call this triple, uh, this set with three operations, composition space, provided in pairs are three objects. So in pairs, there will be three conditions. In pairs, they just have to respect each other. They have to behave properly with respect to each other. So these are the three conditions. They are very natural. They just say that if A times B and A times truncated B are defined, then the truncation <coughs> of the product, I can truncate this, it's just A times B truncated. So this just means multiplication on the left uh, behaves like homomorphism with respect to, to D. Right? So this is just a homomorphism, uh, multiplication is just a homomorphism. This is very natural also because this simply says that if I have an element A and I truncate it, I will not get something more complicated. Right? Truncation, I just, in all the examples, you forget some information, uh, so you should get a simpler object. It, it's not always the case that you get a strictly simpler object, but it, you will never get this anything more complicated. And the last condition, so this was uh, how multiplication interacts with truncation, truncation with norm, and here how norm uh, in, interacts with the multiplication. So what happens here is this, that if I have B that is simpler than C, and I can multiply C by A, then so C is more complicated than B, then I also am able to multiply B by A, because B is simpler. And what must happen, multiplication must preserve the norm. So if I, say I multiply, the norm stays in the same relation. So this is all. This is just, just three conditions of the underlying set. So let's just see in this, in this particular example. So I, A, I will just have the set of all increasing injections from the natural number to positive natural numbers. So this is the underlying set. Now I have to define what the truncation is. This is the standard Ramsey theorem that I had in the first example. Uh, so multiplication first. So A times B is just composition. Except it's defined partial. It's not fully defined because if I have A, well, I only declare it to be defined in the following situation. If I have A going from K to positive natural numbers and B from L to positive natural numbers, for this to make sense, the image of B has to be included in the domain of A. So the image of B has to include, be included in K. So it's a, it's a partially defined multiplication. Truncation is, I look at A, this is an increasing injection, I just chop off the last value, the top value. So I just remember the initial values. If A, A I allow K to be zero, so A may be empty, then this K minus one, zero minus one is just zero. So if it's empty, I actually don't decrease complexity. And the norm, is just, well, if you take an increasing uh, injection, look at the last value it takes. That's the norm of, of A. And it's quite easy to check that the, the three axioms are fulfilled. For example, if I take an increasing injection, I truncate the last value, clearly the norm will go up, down, unless I'm empty, right? because you just forgot the last value. So this is very easy to, uh, all these conditions are easy to check in, this in these situations. And uh, they get more complicated. So if you want to prove, so in some sense, in, in, in examples, in particular examples, the guessing what the, the, the composition, norm composition space is, is 
large part of the work. And these composition spaces get quite complicated when you talk about trees or dual uh, Ramsey for trees, but this is the simplest of them all. So uh, this is a norm composition space, easy to check in this case. So now, of course, Ramsey theorems are not about uh, functions, about points, they are about sets. I take two subsets of injections, I compose them, and I control, I, I uh, color the resulting set, the resulting composition set. So what are, I have to lift the multiplication in general also to subsets. Okay, so this is done in the most natural way again. So I have this norm composition space that I defined before, and I fixed, F, I will have a finite, a family of finite sets that are non-empty, subsets of A. This will be, this is something that again, you have to, in particular example, you have to guess what it is. <coughs> and uh, what I assume is that there is a partial function from this product to F. So this is like a multiplication lifted to the product. And the only condition about it that I, I, I require is that this is not something funny, that it actually comes from pointwise multiplication. So F uh, is called a family over A, provided this official multiplication of two elements, F and G of F, that this is defined precisely when I can multiply every element of f by every element <coughs> of g. So f, g is defined. And the official multiplication is just equal to the pointwise multiplication. So there is nothing funny. Multiplication comes from the pointwise multiplication. So this is, the dot is, uh, the, the, this, 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 this bullet here, is just a restriction of pointwise multiplication. And again, in particular case, it's always a pro proper restriction and in particular cases, because of some conditions that I will later uh, state, it's, it's, it's important to correctly guess this, uh, what this bullet is, what this restriction is. So a family, this is a, a notion, it's sort of an important notion, because this is where the induction gets its foothold. So uh, this f is called vanishing, if for every element f here, I will be able to find the t, so that if I keep truncating f, so keep truncating every element of f, and I get, so if I take F, I truncate every element in it, I get a new family, new set. Truncate every element of it, get a new set, and so forth, and so forth. And so if there will, for every F, there will be a T, so if I keep truncating, I'll get to a one point set. This is where induction, this is what I feel, uh, this is where induction starts. So it's an important condition, condition of vanishing. So example, let's back, go back to this example, and then I will state the theorem. So, as you expect in this example, the, the family F will consist of the following sets. Look at KL, K less than or equal to L, and look at simply all increasing injections from K to L. So these are, I mean, this is a justified notation because these are all K level subsets of L. And F is just a family of what such. And what is the official dot? Well, it's like multiplying uh, ratios. So if I have NM and LK, this is defined precisely when M is L, and I just uh, uh, forget about L, and I, and I take N, 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 K. It's easy to check that it's defined pointwise. There's something to check. And if this equality comes from the fact that I already mentioned that if I have an injection from K, increasing injection from K to N, it factors through L. That's what it is. It's very easy to check. But it's important that we pick this, this restriction of pointwise multiplication. And uh, again, this is given pointwise, so this is a family of, of A. Notice that pointwise multiplications of two uh, sets like this is defined under much weaker conditions. M simply has to be greater or equal to L, so this is a proper restriction. So this is how it works in this particular example. It's easy to check it's vanishing. If I have N, M, so these are all, what, uh, injections from M to N. If I truncate it M times, I forget all the values, so I have M ending up with the empty function. So just a single element in this set. Okay. So this is, these are uh, conditions easy to check for in this, in this particular case. Uh, so let me state the uh, Ramsey theorem. And I see, so I have a family of, so I assume, so as I said, I will now have to state, this is the most technical part. This will be the statement of the pigeonhole principle. Now first I will have to state what the Ramsey, general Ramsey condition is. And I will have to stay, I will, it, will be a Ramsey, it will be a condition on the family of over, over a normed composition space. So this will be a condition that is just a copy of this restatement of the Ramsey theorem that I had on, on, on one of the initial slides. 
So this is an easy to state condition. So the condition is as follows. This is a general Ramsey statement. D number of colors given. For each P in F, uh, there is an F in F such that FP is defined. And for every decoloring of FP, there is an F here such that F dot P is monochromatic. So this is like in this Ramsey statement, right? This was this P was uh, <coughs> all, all functions from K to L. F was all functions from L to M. And I colored the composition. I have to, in general, I have to call the, in this official composition. And then out of this uh, sort of, uh, of this product, I fix, I find an F here such that the section is monochromatic. All the Ramsey statements are, I, are of this form, and I mean, in this particular case, it's easy to see. I mean, this is just a copy of it. Okay, so the pigeonhole statement. This is this is the, a bit uh, technical, but it's sort of this is a, a statement that is hidden. I mean, it's not. If you look at different Ramsey statements, this pigeonhole principle can be very varied. So this cannot be similar to any particular case, just because uh, they are so different from each other. So let me motivate it first. So uh, some. Just a couple of notions. If I have an element A here, this can be viewed as a partial function from A to A. Def well, it's just defined on the set of all x's so that A can multiply x, right? A doesn't multiply every x, but it multiplies some x's. So I look at the set and it's a partial function from that set to A. <coughs> That's A, right? Take x and just multiply it by A. So I will say that A is a restriction of B if, if B extends A as a partial function. So just, just a very natural notion of extension or restriction. And then I will say F, if I have F subset of A and A and A, I will look at F A will be all the elements of F such that F extends A. This will be important in the, this, this is the important, it will be a re important, so in, in the Ramsey theorem, we pick F that makes things monochromatic. In the pigeonhole principle, we'll have to pick it from a set of this form. Right, extending some given A. And then there is a dual notion of restriction on, 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 on these spaces. If I have a P, P subset of A, and I have an element Y and A, P, Y are simply all X's that truncate to Y. So I have a, a more complicated object X. If it truncates to, to Y, so if it has just, has just below it Y, I put it into P, Y. So F, A, just normal function extent, partial function extension, this is truncation. Okay, so now I can motivate the notion. So in, in R, what we do, we color F times P, right? We color this co composition. And we requ require the color to be monochromatic on a set of this form, on a section like this. And the, the, what pigeonhole, the, the, where the drop of complexity is, is in, in, in going to pigeonhole principle, is in not stabilizing the color, sorry, uh, on this whole set, but only on a small part of it. So what is it? We consider an, uh, uh, this, uh, this equivalence relation on P. I make two points in P equivalent if their truncations are equal. <coughs> so what is an equivalence class of this equivalence relation? This is PY, right? Because if truncations are equal, all of them truncate to a single Y. And PY consists of everybody who truncates to that, that single Y. So I, I have a P, and P is divided into these equivalence classes that are pre-images of this function D. And these are much smaller sets, this PY, than P itself in general. Okay? And what we will require in the pigeonhole principle is that the coloring be constant not on the whole FP, but on FPY for a fixed Y. So we'll fix Y in advance and just require that it will be constant on FPY. But there will be a price to pay. I mean, this, this would be sort of a miracle. The theorem is not a miracle. So this is. The price to pay will have to make F, this stabilizing F, right? I, I need to mo make monochromatic a much smaller set than in Ramsey, but this F will have to be special. It will have to, its behavior will be prescribed by A. It will have to extend a certain A in the, in, as a function, right? So there will be a price to pay for this, uh, for this uh, weakening of the condition. So now, <coughs> Here's the statement. So this is this technical statement, but this is unavoidable. F a family over a norm composition space. And now we'll look at the following criteria. So this is the pigeonhole. 
So this statement is just a, a, a weakened Ramsey statement. So if I have, I have P in P and Y, some truncation of an element of, of P. For this situation, I will find an F in F, so that FP is defined. And for every decoloring of F dot PY, just as one class, there is an F here that will stabilize the color. This would be just like the Ramsey statement. Nothing would change. I would just stabilize it on a smaller set. So this would be this miracle that doesn't happen, right? So, so what, what has to happen, what I said, is this F that does the stabilization has to behave as A tells it. But there's no A, so here's an A. So this picture is actually quite symmetric. For P and Y, there is an F here and an A, such that FP is defined, AY is defined, and for every decoloring of this, there is an F here such that this is monochromatic. But here, of course, nothing happened yet. This A has no uh, relation with anything else here. But here is what uh, its importance. F must extend A. Right? So given P and Y, there is an F and A. This is defined like in Ramsey. A, Y is defined. And uh, for every decoloring of this, there is an F extending A in capital F that makes it monochromatic. The drop in com complexity of the condition comes from considering the single class. So now the, the main abstract theorem, now we have everything to state it. So let F be this, a vanishing family. So I have a norm composition space always. I have a, a family. And uh, the family is such that every element of the family, I've said in the family, if I keep truncating it, I will get a single point. So it's vanishing. Now F will have to fulfill a certain conditions A, B, C. Easy to, I, will, I didn't want to overwhelm people with definitions here. I probably did already, but it's on the next slide. Uh, A, B, C, and I will not dwell on it too much. Uh, then what happens is pigeonhole implies Ramsey. So this abstract pigeonhole implies this abstract Ramsey theorem. This is what is implied. These additional conditions, so that this is the main theorem of the theory that is, it's a, applied sort of in an iterative manner. Now, these conditions A, B, C, I don't want to go over them. They are very easy conditions. So they are not always true, but they are always easy to check whether they are true or not. So these are, these are really something, they are not very technical. It's some form of uh, asymmetric uh, association. If F is closed under truncation, and there is some extension, extendability conditions. They are easy to state, easy to check, easy to verify or, or disprove. So let me not, not go into, into them. Let me maybe just very quickly say what this dual Ramsey theorem for trees. So this is an application that is actually quite classical, that one actually gets from this. So the dualization actually a misnomer. So this is it's really a, a, a generalization. So uh, the dualization here goes through uh, Galois connections and embedding projection pairs, as I said. So I don't think I, how much I can convey here, but we, so as I said, in Ramsey theorems, we so uh, we we'll have here actually partial orders, in fact, trees. Trees in the set theoretic manner considers partial order, finite. We we'll have a morphism between it, injected morphism. This is a morphism in terms of doiber, so it's a morphism that preserves joint, not just a regular morphism, joint preserving morphism. Trees also has, a, is, 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 is always in Ramsey theorem, a linear order on it. This morphism should preserve the linear order and be injected. Let me not go into the details here. But the point is that we can view this morphism as a pair, a so-called embedding projective pair when, where this is an injective morphism and this is a subjective morphism going the other way. So there's some relationship, some sort of Galois type relationship. Easy to state, I don't want to do it here. But we view E as a, as a pair. And the main point is that we forget, we still view it as this Galois pair, embedding projection pair, but we forget that F is a morphism. So E is a morphism. This is still an embedding projection pair. But F need not be a morphism. It's a much more general, very complicated object in general. But F, E doesn't remember. So here, F and E are inter interchangeable. F remembers E, E remembers F. Here, F remembers E, but E doesn't remember F. And we forget E. And this we call rigid surjection. And then the theorem is Ramsey theorem holds for rigid sur surjections among ordered trees. So this is, a, this is a, th a statement that gives a common generalization of the dual Ramsey theorem and Leib's theorem for ordered trees. And let me just very, very quickly say where, the, where this is going. So 
this, uh, the first two, two points are something actually the work of the last year, so this is like essentially, I think, uh, settled by now. So there should be, as I said, a general lambda theory for, uh, uh, for both the finite and infinite case. There is also a general approach for the ultra, ultra filter based, based methods. So this is, this is quite nice because it's a sort of a, limit case, a limiting case, which is sort of nice. Uh, this opens the door for classifying Ramsey theory, theorems in a very natural algebraic way. So each Ramsey theory comes with its natural structure, its composition spaces and its families, and there is a natural uh, Ramsey theoretic notion of reduction of one structure to another. So one could consider one Ramsey theorem more complicated than the other. I'm about to be done with them. So if, 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 they are, if there's, there's reductions, and of course, one would like to incorporate other uh, concrete Ramsey statements in this, in this. Let me not go into it, but uh, rather, rather other, other Ramsey statements in the general theory. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> now, now time for questions and answers. Further questions. No more questions, so let us thank the speaker again. Especially <laughs> this gift, gift that you already noticed from the yes, organizing thanks. committee. I don't know. I don't know. So that's everything for today's session.